Right, okay, so we're, we're back with another game here against um, Tin02, and I'm not even sure what country that is. Malaysia, maybe? Malaysia? Is it Malaysia? Something like that, I believe. Right, uh, enough talking. This time we'll stick with a solid French defence. No, no, more, no more grob action for the time being. We've had our fun with a grob. Oh, interesting. Well, someone was asking me recently, what do I play against Queen E2? And I now transpose into a Sicilian position because I feel the queen on e2 is quite misplaced. And I put my bishop on g7 in order to control the dark squares in the center. Um, and now in these type of positions, I normally try to go e5 at some point, getting a very nice hold on the dark squares in the center of the board. I don't need to rush playing e5 though. I can get my pieces developed first, but this is a perfectly happy position for me. And I already quite like my position, to be honest. I don't think bishop g5 was a great move. And he wants me to play e5. So this is kind of peculiar play. And now a very thematic move in these positions is f5. Um, so I'll play it. And uh, the idea, he should probably take on f5 now. If he doesn't take on f5, I can get this kingside roller going with f4 and g5. And off we go with the pawns. Push him up the board. And get some action like that. So um, he really should take on f5. And then I'll probably take with a knight. He hasn't taken on f5. So is that... S well, I think now I just simply take his knight. Move my knight. I could move my knight into the centre. Which is quite tempting now. Um, and that will probably give me a small advantage. Or I can try to retreat it to e7. And then try to play with uh, some king's side push. Um, well, knight, knight e7 is more interesting, isn't it? Because then we can get... Uh, look at all these pawns on the king side. e5, f5, g6. Let's let's just roll them up the board. So I want to play f4 anyway. Then probably plonk a piece onto f5. And this should be pretty, pretty good for me. So what's my rating? My rating is only 23.85. I lost a couple of games while I was waiting a while back. So I need to... Uh, try to uh, improve on that and get some wins on the board. I was 2,500 a while back. This is in the five minute pool. Um, I believe uh, the top 10 players in the world are about 2,500. So if I want to get in the top of the top, I should need to gain a fair few rating points. Okay, well, here, what do I play? I could, I mean, G4 is very interesting. This is the most tactical move. To Get my bishop. Let's let's go for it. Idea is to say bishop takes and get a very annoying pin. I want to go knight f5 to d4. So my opponent very wisely stops that idea. Um, and that's a good move, queen e4. I mean, bishop here, queen e2. And, of course, I can get a draw, but we're not interested in any silly draws. Okay, so I'm thinking what pieces of mine are not doing a great job here. Well, my knight on e7, I don't think, I think I'm only dreaming to try to get it to d4. So let's bring it to g6, supporting my pawn on f4. And maybe my queen can come into the attack a little bit later on. It's just, my pieces are just building around white's king here. So I, I quite like my position. And okay, well, let's now bring the queen in. So my rook can come to e8. And potentially my bishop can go to h3 and swap off a defender of my opponent's king. So that's probably a clever move. My opponent wants to go queen to h5. Um, or bishop to e4. Maybe one of these two moves. Not sure which one. Now, I'm wondering if I go rook e8 or if I just double on the f-file. I, I think it's probably more accurate here to double on the f-file. I think this is where the action is going to take place somewhere on the f file you know um if i can ever get the move f3 in i'll be laughing and we all like a laugh oh dear i'm not laughing anymore um well there you go that was just a, that was a gm blunder oh what patter all i can say about that um well i've got to try to hustle now okay i, I totally missed g4 trapping my bishop luckily it was an amazing sacrifice. Um, you can see I've swapped the coffee for wine now. So uh, I'm not sure how this is going to affect my play. Um, so yeah, it was actually a blunder. But actually it's turned out to be a pretty good idea here. Because now I can take on d3. Um, and my knight on f4 looks like a beast. It's funny how it works in chess. You know, I've done this before. I've played a blunder. And after the game, 
you know, it's been reported that this was an amazing idea where I've, you know, sacrificed a pawn for a great initiative. In actual fact, I've just blundered a pawn and got lucky. But I generally don't tell anyone that. So that's my, uh, that's just between you and me. Um, which looks very pleasant now, doesn't it? With all my pieces hovering around his king. Um, maybe I should now move my queen back to come into h4. It's not coming on this diagonal. So even a little move, like I want to get all my pieces in the attack. My queen needs to join in. So queen d8. Oh, it's a nice glass of red wine as well, which makes things even that a little bit more tastier. Um, well, this is life, isn't it? A bit of chess, nice glass of red wine, and hopefully not too many rating points down the drain. That's a clear. I think that's a good idea. I, I don't think you could allow my queen to get in, so my opponent sacrifices a pawn to stop that. I mean, of course, my position should still be good here, but I think he, he took a wise decision here. Um, okay, well, what about e4? It's very interesting to try to get a rook to the h file. Uh, I mean, if I swap the bishop off, I can get rook to the h file. Do I take with a rook and go rook to h7, or do I take with the king and go rook to h8? Not sure it makes a great deal of difference. Maybe he's going to go in bishop here check. We always have to try to stop our opponent getting counterplays. Let's take with a king. Um, because then if he goes bishop e6, e6, I can take it and take on f2. And that should be good. Um, okay, so I'm just going to bring my queen into the game first. I've got to be a bit careful of my time again. This is one thing I keep forgetting to... to uh, Keep an eye on my position is lovely. Um, okay, let's just get attacking. Target f2, and hopefully I don't do any more blunders. Uh, the red wine attack could be playing off. Um, right, okay, as you can see, that's that move. A lot of moves I'm missing today, which is very worrying. Um, let's. Just, I want to get the queens off now. Really, I don't know why I want to get the queens off. Now, can I take on b2? Let's let's give this a go. I don't know. Uh, we're knight f2 check ideas. It's a very greedy move. Not sure I should really be doing that kind of idea here. I mean, I shouldn't really be overcomplicating the position when I'm clearly better. It Does, doesn't make much sense to do that. So, okay, now let's just bring my queen back to e5. It's a bit murky after. Okay, now 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 I've just got to can't retreat here. I've got to keep coming forwards, even if it means sacrificing. So rook takes f3, trying to break through his defences. And I'm a little bit concerned about something happening g5, but I think my attack is coming in that little bit quicker here. I hope so. Is it? Well, I've got I've got I've got some tactics. Knight f2. Rook takes take the queens off, take the rook, pawn up, two pawns up in an ending. But then he has bishop. No, he hasn't got bishop f5. So this looks this looks like the right way to play. Just try to keep it simple because the red wine. This is the red wine attack. So I'm just trying to simplify things and get into a very good ending for me. Um, which his pawns are also on light squares. He has a light squared bishop. And that makes things a little bit uncomfortable for him, um, you know, in any potential end game. So, uh, well, being two pawns down is probably more important than anything else. So, okay, he's gone for this, but I think this is this is technically winning now. I could have done other moves as well. But this just looked very, very simple. Because of his pawns, I'm just going to target his pawns, take him and win the game. So he should really resign now, just a tin man. So let's see if I can find out who this guy is. Uh, tin, um, I believe it's, is that Malaysian flag? Indonesian? I don't know. Some Somewhere somewhere like that, um, I believe. But as you've probably seen if you've been watching my other videos, I'm not, I'm not particularly an expert with flags um, of the world, so that's that's uh, not my speciality. Um, okay, I mean, I'm I'm making this a bit more difficult than I should do, but it's a technically winning position, even if I lose this pawn. Um, I'm just because his pawns are on light squares, but I'm making this I am making this a lot more difficult than I should be, which is a bit foolhardy of me. I don't know why I played in this way. I'm actually, not sure how I win this now, and my time's running out. Oh dear. Um, so I love I love making things difficult for myself, don't I? What am I doing here? I'm playing like a complete idiot. Now I've got to try to run my king around, but this is very risky because d6 is on free. I could have taken that pawn as well. This is this is a 
crazy. Okay, I can go for Zhuzhuang. Zhuzhuang, um, even. Um, oh dear, I've blundered peace. What on earth is this? King B2. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, what an idiot. Okay, right. Well, um, I've just got to hustle now. Absolutely disgusting play by me. That was like probably some of the worst play I've ever done in my life. And now, well, I mean, I I'm probably am just losing this, but I, I can try to get some tricks going, you know? Well, okay. Not, okay, I'm just going to... Oh, dear. It's an up and down game. Three pawns should be better than the bishop here. Just got to keep pushing him. And get going with the pawns. Here they come. Look at them. It's like, like space invaders. They're coming down the board. And, well... Uh, another quality performance, I think you'll agree. That was awful. What was I doing there? I blundered a piece to start with um, uh, at the end where I'm completely winning and then somehow I, uh, I managed to flag him. Um, so rather up and down game there. Um, a bit fortunate again. As you see, I haven't really been playing very smoothly at the moment. But I think that opening, if we just look at that quickly, we can see the c5 moves very good answer to queen e2. And you have to ask yourself, why, why is the white queen, sorry, if we just go back on e2. It looks silly having a queen on e2 here. And this setup I pick with the black pieces now is like what we call a reversed Botvinnik setup. And it resembles an English opening. And my opponent gave me a lot of tempos here by moving his bishop a lot of times. And then when you have this set up with your pawns and dark squares in the center, a very thematic move here is move f5 and my opponent i think really should take on f5 here always this is a rule because in the game we saw i got this big pawn formation storming up the board so uh and then i don't know if i even want to look at this ending i mean look at this position here how can i nearly end up losing this position um so yeah i, I probably won't be writing any end game books in the near distant future um but anyway quite entertaining so cheers for now